Favorite TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Praise the Lord and good evening and thank you for joining us for this live broadcast Apostolic Clinic coming to you live from Elevate TV. My name is Pastor Tim Wangi and we are so excited to be here at exactly 8.35 to have conversations uh, that touch on the body of Christ and matters that touch on our faith. And today, before we even go very far, it's been a very busy week and a very busy weekend. We bless the Lord for what he's doing in our, in our country and also in our nation, in our cities, and in our specific towns. And I want to begin, I'm here today with Apostle David Juma. Uh, I don't even know how he's here because the man has been all over. And I just want him to just give us an update of how his week and weekend has been. Bona sana. Amen. Amen, amen. No, I'm here by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah, yesterday was amazing because after our two services, mm. um, then we had one of our sons who got a PhD. Wow. So I was speaking briefly in the function in the afternoon, mm. half of the afternoon, and then we rushed to Juja. Because there's been uh, uh, all the leaders in Juja sub-county who are doing a, a prayer conference. Wow. And so I went to speak there late afternoon and up to when darkness was on. <laughs> <laughs> By the grace of God. We thank Amen. God for what's going on in the churches mm. in the nation. I believe like the Lord you know, revealed uh, to me sometime 2020. I've talked about it many times. About an awakening hitting the earth after covid because whatever the enemy tries to do mm -hmm. in the spirit against frontline revival, awakening, change, reformation, and all that, mm -hmm. you know, he, he doesn't know that when he raises something against the body of Christ, God will turn things for good. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the converse matter is that now people are getting saved like crazy. Churches are coming together. Leaders are finding it easier to work together. Mm -hmm. And the unity meetings are many. Mm. And so I think that has been my story the last couple of weeks. Uh, not even mentioning August. Getting to September, I thought it would be a little slower. But then I looked at my calendar and said, Oh Lord, because mm. the body of Christ is really, most churches are just open for all these kind of conferences, meetings. And traditionally, those of us, by the grace of God, who have been itinerant ministers, preaching here and there, and especially there, mm. <laughs> it's been very busy. Yes. This weekend was mm. amazing. We were also in Kamulu. I joined you in Kamulu. Yes, I was in Kamulu. Uh, the leaders in Kamulu, yes. uh, they invited you for this wonderful three days tent meeting. Yes. And I managed to come one session. <laughs> and a cripple walked. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and this, uh, this, this little, uh, you know, was that from four? Uh, student who left from for something mm. then couldn't walk. Yeah, yeah. So it was a girl who couldn't walk. Yeah. She came in that meeting being carried. I remember. But uh, as the Bible says, which one is easier? To say your sins are forgiven or carry your mat. <laughs> and she left there carrying her mat. I, I remember seeing on my left side, you know, uh, two women, mm. you know, carrying and bringing somebody who could not walk. So, and then one of the ushers, the uniform, was kind of trying to kind of stop them not to come all the way. I said, no, no, let her come. I came to the carpet. And then they placed her there. Yeah. And then that time now we were asking people to get saved. Yeah. And, you know, made a prayer and then asked one of the, your, your guest, Bishop Dixon, yeah. you know, uh, to, to also her. come down and mm. pray. And then, then I left. Yeah, the, the testimony, she was there in the service yesterday. Wow. The, the rally. Um, and the testimony is she, she, she came, mm -hmm. she was walking, and she is walking. Praise the Lord. And we give God all the glory. <laughs> many, many miracles happened in that meeting. Amen. And as you're saying, there is a general hunger. Mm -hmm. Because I believe awakenings is an opening of people's hearts. Yeah. And they are just hungry for God. Absolutely. And uh, um, so this, that was the weekend. Uh, the Juja meeting began on Tuesday, so Apostle Julius Subi was there two days, mm. Wednesday, Thursday, then I was there from Friday. 
uh, the week before I was in Narok. Another move of God. It mm -hmm. was amazing. This week I'm in Akuru. Okay. From Thursday wow. to Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I did thank God for his grace. I also sometimes don't know how we operate, <laughs> but I remember Jesus saying, you work during the day yes, yes. for the night coming. Yes, yes. So when it gets to night and you hit the bed, mm. just rest. But God amazing. renews the strength. Amen. I mean, you, you are doing crazy things. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say, I don't know where you got that from, <laughs> <laughs> but you are not resting. But, and I noticed, I said, yeah. when I was younger, mm. uh, physically, yeah. I could operate like that. Mm. But I realized... Uh, if I was operating at, uh, you know, 80, yes. now I'm operating maybe at uh, 70. And that's 70, uh, some of us cannot come. Uh, <laughs> because I, I notice I'm also getting quite tired. Wow. Because age mm. is also catching up. Mm. But the most amazing thing, one, uh, one time I had a divine encounter. Mm. And I think that's what changed my life because I know most people ask, how are you doing all these things? I also don't know. I just realize sometimes I'm so tired. If I hear the right song, the right atmosphere, we make some prayers. Mm. Shoo, strength yes. shows up. Mm. Then I'm tired later. Mm. Then another move. Mm. One time I had a divine encounter. I found myself in a dream, laying down on my bed, facing up. And then somebody showed up from behind me mm. and began to massage my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that as the person who was touching my shoulders in my dream, mm. muscles were entering me. Wow. So from behind. And mm. so I felt so nice mm. that, uh, you know, I enjoyed the moment. And it took like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I woke up from that because, you know, it ended, I noticed I was as light as a feather on wow. that bed. And I could not wow. sleep again. Mm. And then without, even before I even could get into prayer, mm. I noticed an angel. Wow. Strengthened me. Mm. I understood when Jesus, when the scriptures talked about the angel coming to strengthen Jesus. Mm. And I think it renewed my strength. Mm. I think I can only say it's supernatural. Uh, to God be the glory. Amen. I didn't invite the angel. <laughs> Just showed up. And I think heaven is so, so, you know, uh, this last week, listen, I had somebody getting saved in my office on Monday. And one of the politicians Somebody else got saved on Tuesday mm. um, in another appointment. Then another person got saved on Wednesday, mm. Thursday, mm. Uh, then Friday in the 10th, uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday, mm. both in the service here and Juja. So when I was praying this morning, I was feeling, Lord, people have been getting saved the last seven days. Mm. Of course, there are others before. I wish this can continue. I wouldn't want it interrupted. Mm. We need to see people come into Christ every day. Mm. And this is the joy of just being the ministry. So yesterday, a man crying tears like a baby, mm. giving his life to Christ. Wow. I say the whole of this 10 meeting, even if it was just for this man. Mm. You know, I hear the story of Peter Graham. Mm. He's the only one who got saved as a little boy. Mm in this meeting mm. and the preacher was feeling frustrated mm. that people are not getting saved mm. but look at what the lord did yes and so and then later today i ended up invited in the juja sub county both the government with the the commissioner's office the dcc the senior police officers and all the bishops in the region and there was a joint sub county prayer day in juja mm. so i went to minister there 30 minutes and, uh, you know, it's amazing. And we confronted alcoholism, drug taking, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, yesterday night, we also made some very powerful, you know, statements in the spirit. And we are trusting God for transformation. Because the gospel must always impact mm. community. That's very true. And uh, bring the light mm. and give hope to the people. Amen. So uh, that is briefly what has been going on. And to God be the glory. Mm. And we must thank God's people for prayers mm. and uh, our congregations, you know, uh, saying, Lord, help these, our leaders. And then not only that, but also we leaders telling them, mm. whatever we are doing, yeah. you can do it. And true. you need to go and do it mm. in the marketplace, in the mm. office, mm. pray for somebody, encourage somebody, love mm. somebody, mm. demonstrate something that Christ has done in you. Because mm. ministry happens not only in the pulpit, but also in the marketplace. The marketplace. Yeah. Well, oh, that's amazing, Apostle. So this weekend, Akuru? 
Yeah, we, we have Life Church International we planted a mm -hmm. while ago. We are doing an official launch, okay, okay. but we mobilized a conference with many of our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking forward for a great meeting on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Of course, on Sunday, uh, you know, doing the service there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we trust God for equipping. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, equipping has to do with, you know, sharing the subject matters that are going to strengthen and establish God's people. Mm. And then the presence of God can move Amen. and the supernatural can do, Amen. the Holy Spirit can do what he, is, he loves you. doing it. Wow, thank you. You know, Amen. I was told by somebody, mm. how in, I was in, interviewing somebody on one of the shows. He said how in the 70s, a, a great man of God, one of the fathers in the nation would say, Holy Spirit, mm. you began it, mm. you end it. <laughs> you know, you began this move yes, in this yes, service. Yes. You know you what you want to do with it. Wow, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll be in Kajado. There yeah. will be an interdenom meeting in in the stadium, I believe. Oh wow. Organized by the women for prayer. Oh yeah, I saw that, I remember. I yes, saw the, yes. the flyer. So, so what Kajado will be there. Awesome. And now Elevate is turning three. Maybe maybe what a blessing. Globally. I've seen the, 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 the war between Palestine again and, and Israel. Yeah. And I was just going through the feeds and understanding what's happening. And they say there was such an attack 50 years ago uh, after a major celebration of Yom Kippur, yeah. the festival. Yeah. They were attacked by surprise. So this was 50 years, the same design, but this time of a a larger magnitude happening mm, mm. and you know of course the 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 nobody knows they've arrested uh, more than 70 people the palestinians have them in yeah. hostage yeah history says there is a time uh, israel released a thousand prisoners from palestine just to redeem one soldier huh. just to show them how much they value their people so they yeah. don't know what this is going to happen with yeah. the 70 yeah uh, conversations ongoing and I just believe, um, when I look at it for me, is to bless God for the peace in our nation. I tell you. And looking at where we are prophetically and even strategically, I was talking with Bishop Mtalitinia from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And he said there is a contention because Tanzania wants to sell their port to Dubai. Oh, wow. And you know the port is a major gate to any nation. Mm. And they're saying the government is willing to sell the port. Huh. But he said it's beyond selling the port. Mm. Because the people buying and the current president, we know her faith. Mm. It's an agenda to make sure that that becomes the dominant faith mm. in that nation. So I was just looking at the blessing of having a nation. I know we may have different views, mm. but just having a nation where the king is unapologetic about his faith mm -hmm. and the first lady is unapologetic about her faith mm -hmm. and they are also unapologetic about guarding the faith. I think when we look towards Africa, you know, Somalia, um, Uganda is our very close partner. Mm. Ethiopia still, you find they need the new wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a part of it is under war. Mm. And I think when we look at those lenses, God is setting up Kenya for something major, even in East Africa. Kenya has always had these prophetic words mm. that we are a fathering nation, meaning a father nation. Yeah. We hosted Ugandans here for many years. The Sudanese, now the South Sudanese, for many years. Mm -hmm. Some even building here big houses. Yeah. Host, I hear they have a whole estate in Nakuru. Yes. We've hosted uh, the Ethiopians. Oh, we have a huge community here. Mm. Actually, uh, we give covering to a group of Ethiopians here as a church to ensure that they are doing ministry ac accurately. Um, we've hosted Burundians, Rwandese, and many of these African nations. And it's a blessing mm. that Kenya has been having for yeah. this, and Somalia yeah. for that matter. That's true. And so uh, it's also important in the process of us hosting these nations to ensure that we guard certain fundamental mm. uh, places, foundational assets, and gates, as it were. Yeah. I think the Tanzanian bishop needs to probably mobilize his other bishops, mm. and they can go before God in prayer and say, Lord, what do you want us to do? Mm. And then maybe the Lord can give them a strategy. Guidance. Uh, the apostolic prophetic is very key. Let me tell you a story. The one time, I was reading a book by one of my friends, uh, an apostle 
uh, lady, very prophetic and very deep in equipping the body of Christ. And this book, I think, was called Cyrus Decree, uh, Apostle Jane Harmon. And she talked about how they were praying as a group of intercessors around, along the beach on the Florida side, I think Long Beach Island, mm -hmm. not, not Island, Long Beach. And as we are praying, asking the Lord, because there are thousands of young people, week after week, who are selling drugs and getting into a total mess. So, and they were praying and asking the Lord, how do we deal with this matter? Then the Lord gave them a strategy. I don't know whether that can be said on TV, but this is a radical <laughs> television. Yeah. He said, deal with the cartels mm -hmm. in the spirit wow. and the financials. Mm. So they didn't pray for the young people no more, but went a little bit in mm. to deal with those who f sell and finance the drugs. They made some prayers and cut it off. And those guys went bankrupt. Wow. And the young people were no longer on the streets. Wow. Today I was reading this scripture. In Mark chapter 4, towards the end, Jesus lying on the boat asleep, and the disciples were saying, Master, don't you care, we perish. Then Jesus, when he woke up, he rebuked the wind, and the waves stopped, mm. and there was calm. Because the waves were bringing water into the boat, mm. but it's because there was wind. Yeah. He did not rebuke the waves, mm -hmm. he rebuked the wind. Mm. So if Tanzania can identify the, the root, mm and they rebuke the roots. Mm. Jesus spoke to a tree. Yeah. In 24 hours it had dried. From the roots. One time the Lord, <laughs> one time the Lord told me, yeah. anything has been done in scripture, whether mm. Old Testament or New mm. Testament, mm. it's supernatural, yeah. it can be repeated. That formula is there. Yeah, that formula is <laughs> what? There's a portal. <laughs> wow. So you can speak to a system, yes. and in 24 hours, it will be, it, it will be dried up. Wow. Whether it's an individual, mm. whether it's a cartel, whether it's mm. a wineskin, a group, mm. a company, mm. whatever, mm. Uh, as long as God wanna mm. do something, it can be done. It's, it's, I, I really believe it. I remember there's a time Prophet Tony said he had a lot of burden for Congo. Yeah. And for the first time there was an election in Congo uh -huh. without very without post election violence yes. that escalated to war. That's true. And slowly we are seeing now, of course there are a few skirmishes here and there, yeah. but not as it was in the former years. We're slowly seeing peace coming back. The prophetic is very amazing, uh, uh, Pastor T. Uh, Tony, talking about Tony, there's Congo and Congo Brazzaville. Mm. He called me one time and told me, I have seen danger in Congo Brazzaville. Please, let's pray for Congo Brazzaville. I have seen a big explosion. It's not good, you know, and so forth. So we prayed on the phone. And then I'm wondering, what a burden, because who thinks about Congo Brazzaville from here? Mm. After two weeks, the armory in Congo Brazzaville exploded. Wow. Thousands of people would have died. Mm. There were a few deaths, minimal, but it was all over in the news. Of course, the uprising in the north, mm. Algeria, mm. Morocco, Egypt, and so forth, you remember? Mm. And it was becoming bad, and mm. Africans beginning the conversation. Mm. And this prophet, uh, I like his prophetics and how God speaks to him. God wakes him up in the night, and then he prays, he prays, gets into a little... Uh, uh, like a trance mm. and he travels to the Mediterranean mm -hmm. with a team of prayerers and mm. they hired a boat and drove right into the middle of the uh, Mediterranean mm. and the Lord told them to do a prophetic act throw a stone in the middle mm. and they will slay the spirit mm. that is causing the uprising in those northern nations and that movie went up to morning wow that was the last week to hear the uprising in the North African countries. God knows how in the world mm -hmm. to pick certain ministers here and there, saints and God's people, mm -hmm. give them specific assignments, mm -hmm. especially in the apostolic prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. That's a dimension that is yet to be known. We are still scratching a little bit of mm -hmm. the depth and power mm -hmm. of that anointing. But uh, the more we accept, the more we are open, mm. the more we push in and say, Lord, keep sending genuine prophets, mm. keep sending genuine apostles, keep, you know, maturing the church to prepare for this. Mm. I'm telling you, anything, you see, Old Testament says God does nothing. Mm. Unless, unless he reveals, reveals it first 
to his prophet. Mm. And I believe whatever may come to our nation, Kenya is blessed. Mm. Of course, where we are, it has taken major moments of prayer before, mm. uh, declarations, decrees, prophetic mm. acts, mm. and some people are laughing at them. Oh, you're praying that county, praying that county. Mm. Look at the peace. Mm. But we have to do the same to sustain mm. as we go to the future. Because mm. Kenya is like an island within this part of Africa. That's right. And it's taken the hand of God. Amen. We should be humble, not be proud as Kenyans. Remember, mm. the enemy is always trying to attack us. Well, um, I was listening to a prophet uh, that I trust because of his writings, 60 years of prophetic ministry. That's not few bonga points. Mm. And he said, the enemy has used terrorism in the past. Mm. He will use virus wow. as the next major weapon. Mm. And we end a test in 2020. Mm. So I think we ain't seen nothing yet. Mm. But the good news is, mm. uh, Mark 16, verse 15 down to 18, yeah. these signs that shall follow them that believe mm. in, my name, in my name, they shall take up serpents, mm. that's destroying witchcraft, or if they drink any deadly thing, mm -hmm. shall not hurt them. Mm. And I think COVID was very deadly. Mm. And maybe the vaccine, mm. who knows? Mm. Uh, but it shall not hurt. It shall not harm us. Amen. So, Apostle, we, we are coming to three years, three years yes. of Elevate TV. Yeah, you had mentioned three years. And, and, and I think tonight, um, I've been in the media space for a while. And first of all, I want us to lay a foundation mm -hmm. so that we first of all understand that we understand the background of the seven mountains before we even come to the mountain of media. Right. I just, I was, I was reading somewhere, and I, I was reading about the end times, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the eschatological views, mm -hmm. and I stumbled upon a, pa a particular team that um, I, I can't, I think you know the name of the pioneer, yeah, who came up with the concept of dominionism, yeah. the concept of dominion, how can the church have control over communities, societies, and civilization? And for so long, I did not know that the seven mountain ideology was birthed from the church. But when I look at it, it's as if it was birthed from the church, but implemented by the world. And the secular system has success, yet it is our pattern to conquer yeah. the, the, the civilization and the system. I'm telling you, that's true. And certain sections of the church refused and challenged theologically mm -hmm. than dominionism, mm -hmm. the dominion theology. Well, yes, every move of God that comes, sometimes the pendulum swings. Mm. There are certain extremes on the right and on the left. But with the time, the pendulum settles down and there is something good that comes out of a move of God. Mm. You know, uh, without going into further details in that. But I read an article that informed me a little bit of the foundation of the seven mountains. Yeah. There's a man, a blessed memory, he just went to be the Lord a few days ago. Roren Cunningham. Mm. He's the founder of Why Youth with a Mission, mm. which is a missionary movement for youth across the world. Mm. Now, he was having a breakfast meeting with Bill Bright. Bill Bright is the founder of Campus Crusade. Okay. Here is expressed as live ministry. Mm. And I read this article, and the two men, the way we can say, hey, we've been busy, you've been busy, why don't we meet for a cup of tea? So they met, and they were asking each other, hey, tell me what is the Lord saying? Mm. And then they discovered, Roden is saying, that God has revealed to him that the church needs to consider that there are different sectors of society or mountains of influence that God would want to use. Mm. If it is governance, there should be certain believers within governance who can go all the way to the top and influence society, like Daniel going to the top to become a prime minister in Babylon, Joseph in Egypt. And I only shared, it happens that uh, Bill Bright had also received the same revelation and they discovered that breakfast morning that they had the same insight. Wow. The other day, Last year, when I went to a global um, gathering of the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders, uh, I was given a time to speak on strategies for uh, kingdom outreach, kingdom strategies for outreach. 
but I was paired with uh, a very strong proponent of this idea, Revelation and Insight, who seems to be, have very practical strategies. He's called uh, uh, War Now. Um, and so I was with him in the session. And that man is speaking to America, shaping the church to know how to deal with politics, to, how to deal with business, education, and so forth. And I like his teaching. He's always having a board and writing mm -hmm. on white paper. And, you know, he's an amazing, he's an amazing teacher. So the church will do well to consider Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, it says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, elevated mm. above other hills. And then towards the end, verse 3 says that all nations will be running, mm. coming into once that mm. mountain. Mm. Uh, a man of God here in our country got that revelation. After seven years of seeking God and waiting on God, the, you know, um, Bishop Titus Masika. Mm -hmm. and that's what propelled him to go to Yata and literally has transformed that area and governments, embassies, mm. nations and counties keep going to see what has happened. A dry place has become a green greenhouse, as it were, and poverty is being eliminated mm. at a very fast rate. So uh, so Isaiah says it, Amos says it, that, I mean, Mika, the mountain of the Lord's house is going to be elevated. And that, I know several people challenge it, but as for me, I support it for several reasons. The church, let's say a church of 100 people, 200 people, has one pastor who may raise one assistant. So if the pastor is not preaching, maybe his assistant will speak. But these 100 people, where would they speak? So research has shown that only 2 to 3% of our people in any congregation who will ever speak on the pulpit. The rest, 95 to 97% of the people will practice their faith outside the four walls of the church, what we call marketplace in society. Mm. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13 and 14, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Mm. So that's the foundation. I agree with it. I can see all manner of examples in the word of God mm. uh, of people that went to the top within their societies and did a lot of impact. Recently, the Lord gave me a revelation and I've been sharing about uh, you know, how we can overcome systemic bondages. And this is it. As I was teaching the church on no more deliverance, you know, because Jesus came to deliver the captives, mm. set them free. And you, you can throw, uh, cast out that one demon, cast out, heal that sickness, uh, remove that witchcraft and so forth. That's a basic, what the church understood, understands. But the Holy Spirit gave me insight and I began to see in the word of God that there are certain people that are living within a certain culture, certain tradition, certain system, and as much as they are calling on God, they are limited in how far they can go in certain areas. Mm. And for instance, Egypt was a system. Babylon was a system. I was amazed to find Sodom was a mm. system. Wow. And where you find this, you discover that it's there in Genesis, running through the prophets, all the way to the book of Revelation. You find Sodom in the book of Revelation. Mm. Just like you find Jezebel as a wife of Ahab. Mm. She, saw, she shows up in the book of Revelation. Mm. And you know it's not just Jezebel. Mm. It's a system. It's mm. a certain spirit. Mm. And uh, so you find Daniel in Babylon. Mm. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Mm. I mean, you find Joseph in Egypt. Mm -hmm. When a new pharaoh took over Egypt in Exodus 1 and 2, he discovered the Jews are multiplying greatly. Excuse me. <coughs> and Pharaoh said, the way these Jews are multiplying, mm. if we allow them, mm. what will happen is, excuse me. Mm. Let, let me give you a water break, even as we take a small break. Um, we are looking at systems. <laughs> but we want to unpack the, the seven mountain concept and come to what we call the mountain of media. Because if we understand seriously what <laughs> this mountain of media is and the effect right now in a generation in influence, influencing culture, shaping culture, and even affecting livelihood, it's a major gate that the enemy is utilizing 
and also the church ought to utilize in this very age. See you immediately after the <coughs> short break. Listen, the kind of feedback we have, the kind of testimonies, the kind of stories we are hearing of the impact that Elevate Television is bringing to your family, to you as individuals, the music, times of worship, and the messages being done, and the shows, the discussions, I'm telling from children, and the beautiful music, the Kikwetus, you know, the music from our local area, releasing Kenyan sound, and of course, all talks on business, on leadership, on women issues, and on youth and children. Look, this Elevate TV has been a great blessing, and we want to upgrade uh, our capacity, building it to the next level, and we want to ask you to partner with us financially. So I'm right here coming to you and appealing to you in the name of the Lord. We have an opportunity you can sow and you can give and partner with us. We need extra cameras and extra uh, equipment, you know, for television because we, we are expanding our uh, ex television studios and so forth. And we want to be able to go on the ground to uh, showcase these advancing kingdom lifestyle from different locations in our nation. And so here is an opportunity for you to give. And we have our, our TO number, uh, 532 9905, which you can send in your donations as a church. You can give an offering as an individual, as a business person. Look, you can find ways to partner with us. And we're going to be calling you into specific uh, times when we can sit together and be able to have a dinner together. You'll see the details on the screen. This is the time for you now to reach out and give back to Elevate TV as we take it to the next level. You can use uh, Facebook to inbox us. You can use uh, uh, the other numbers that are uh, on the screen to text us and tell us that you want to give and or just go ahead and use the two number and send your offering right away. Send your donation right away. Let us know that you are partnering with us, even to God, receiving all the praise for you being part of this move of God. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you and welcome back. This is the Apostolic Clinic. We're just having very open conversation. And remember, we are also celebrating Elevator 3. And we'll be telling you on how possibly to partner and be a part of this great vision. Um, someone has just asked for us to elaborate and mention what the seven mountains are. So Apostle was talking about this partnership of visions and uh, how the church can automatically have influence, especially in the spheres of the community and the society. The first, what we call this first mountain is the mountain of governance. The mountain of governance. This is where we have the matters politics and more so matters policy. Matters policy. The second one is the mountain of education or uh, the field of academia. Like right now in Kenya, we are talking about the writing of the CBC curriculum, the review of the curriculum, and the amazing part, I was told that in that sitting, 
they wanted to kick out religious education. Uh, because majority of the professors are very secular mm -hmm. and they feel like religion is a private matter. But what gave the church advantage is the major umbrella bodies and also the presence of churches and churches owning many schools. So meaning that if this was left to the people without the presence of the church, today CRE will not be taught in our schools. And uh, the conflicting part is that the Muslim presence, the Indian presence, and slowly we are seeing what we are calling the African tradition, African renaissance. Their presence was there, but very few. In fact, they say there was no Pentecostal sitting on that table, meaning that there are people deciding what our children will be taught, yet we claim to be the majority. So that's the mountain of education. We also have the mountain of commerce and business. And Apostle, these are very, when we look at it locally, yeah. Very few believers do business in the sea. Very few. Most of us are doing business in the land. And when you know the business is that prices are made at the sea. If, wow. you, if you study the politics of the sugar crisis, a man bought containers at the sea, mm -hmm. which were meant to be delivered to Kenya. And then he had all the supply of the sugar and he dictated the price on land. So when we were praying for the economy, someone was managing the economy, one day I made a joke and I said there is difference between commerce and business. Commerce is in the sea, business is on the land. <laughs> so where the money is, <laughs> and you look at it, you know, it is our cousins. Yeah. For the sake of safety. You're right. Our cousins are the ones dominating the harbor, mm -hmm. and they are the ones dominating the ship. Many warehouses and clearing uh, mm -hmm. enterprises mm -hmm. are not done by believers. Mm -hmm. We are always on the land mm -hmm. and majority of us even flock easily. Mm -hmm. they, uh, we, we flock easily to mm -hmm. buy goods for business. Mm -hmm. We've not conquered that mountain. That is business and commerce. We also have the mountain of arts and entertainment. Um, this year we have movies. This year we have uh, the concept of songs, music. This year we have cartoons. Right now, they are using cartoons to doctrinate children. Mm -hmm. Majority of the cartoons are now turning gay. Mm -hmm. That's the mystery. Mm -hmm. and, and, and young children have been doctrinated as early as now. The stories of the UFOs and the aliens, that is what you find immediately you open a channel. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's a whole conversation right now. They're saying Americans have accepted about the aliens uh, which have intruded. But someone said this will be the narrative that will hijack the concept of rapture. Mm -hmm. where our children will be told some extra celestial being hijacked the earth and they stole some people and they disappeared. So the, the, the narrative is being programmed as early as now. And some of our children are highly... In fact, we're saying cocomelon is one of the leading problems when it comes to child speech delay mm -hmm. because they don't teach them words. Mm -hmm. They teach them sounds. Uh, and, wow. and, and some of these sounds are very technical. So mm. the church must begin to produce Absolutely. serious cartoons Absolutely. that are teaching our children um, a serious stuff. I remember my dad bought me a very small book that was cartoon in nature. And I remember reading the story of Moses and seeing him lift the stick, the water departing. By the time I was reading Exodus, it was so clear because images are very powerful, mm -hmm. especially to the young people. Yeah. And we're also looking at media. And that's all becoming. Yeah. The concept of radio, TV, TikTok, Facebook, um, uh, uh, you know, or the whole concept of phones. The, 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 media, the media is one of the greatest tools in our generation. And someone said, Apostle, media houses are not set up for profits. Mm -hmm. Media houses are set up for agenda setting. I listened to a military expert. Yes. In the U.S. Yes. And I'll talk about it later. Yes. On that matter of media. And, and even we can tell our people to do a practical. Yeah. Go and watch the news. CNN and Al Jazeera. Right now. Right now. Reporting about the Israel war. And it's the same story. It's the same story. And you'll hear the variances in the narration. Mm. Because every house is selling a certain agenda. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful media is. I, I, I always give this story. The Western media made us believe that uh, the, the Hillary Clinton was winning. Even one of the leading newspapers mm -hmm. had published a whole page saying, 
will America get their first female president? Mm. But on the ground, Donald Trump was winning mm -hmm. because media, media will shape, media can make you believe this cup is black. Mm. That's how powerful <laughs> without your concept. And you know, we'll come to that because yeah. we must be intentional. Mm. We also have the mountain of family. Um, uh, this is where, when you talk, anytime you attack family, you've attacked a society, you've attacked a community, you've attacked a nation. Mm. The whole conversation of LGBTQ is only targeting one thing called the family unit. And once that is in, disintegrated, you don't have a society. I think it's um, uh, the late Miles Monroe who said, what brought Rome down was not even a firing of, of any gun because Rome was so powerful that no nation would have brought it down. Mm. But nine out of their 12 emperors were gay. And what caused this disintegration was moral decay. Mm. And right now what we are looking at is the war. We are moving from uh, civil wars to moral war. And the majorly attacked entity is the family unit. And of course we have the mountain of religion. Uh, that is, uh, here we talk about church, mm. but uh, it's just an umbrella body because the religion that rules a certain territory dictates a lot of operations in that territory. Mm. And I believe those are the seven mountains that, yeah, that's true. that yeah. were shared as a part of Dominionism. Mm. And I believe when I looked at it, I was asking myself, how do I conquer Limuru? And the Lord told me, <laughs> conquer every mountain. <laughs> and you will have a same limon. Actually, it's a strategy. The whole aspect of mountains is a strategy. You see, in the 70s and the 80s, uh, in our short history, uh, gospel crusades, public proclamation of the gospel was a in thing. Yeah. And masses gathered to listen to the T.L. Osborns, the Billy Grahams, and our own local evangelists, and it was amazing. Mm. Part of it is still going on, but you can see it has gone down quite a bit. Uh, I'm glad that the 10th ministry is rising now in Kenya yeah. in an amazing way. So, uh, so right now the church has to think, if we cannot do that huge Uhuru Park meeting, what can we do? Maybe you can look for 200,000 believers and set them into the mountain of education. Yeah or send them into media. Yeah. I remember in the 80s, listening to uh, some of the great American media personalities and saying 80% of the top media personalities were atheists. Mm -hmm. So they didn't that, believe that in, in the 80s. In the 80s. Mm -hmm. That meant what came out on TV is, you know, their agenda yeah. and their things they wouldn't show. I mentioned I was in a global gathering and. Uh, an expert consultant for U.S. military gave a very powerful speech telling how to take cities and how to take nations. We can share that online right now because that's part of our arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but we have to conquer the mountains yes. and determine, you know, what are, you talked about children, mm. you know, indoctrination against our children, radicalization in Africa. Yeah, that's yeah. how terrorism has mm. exhaled because of radicalization. Mm. Who is speaking what to the youth from mm. where? Mm. And so you, media is very important and mm. the church cannot ignore media. Mm. I'm glad when COVID came in, uh, a church took the opportunity and went in. They, some of them didn't know how it goes. Mm. Uh, how does Facebook work? Uh, one man of God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he said uh, Facebook is demonic. Mm. He didn't want to do nothing with it. But then when COVID came in, he discovered, oh, oh, I have to talk to my members. Mm. So he only had 10 followers. Mm. So he went on phone, he put live. Mm. He began to say, I'm so-and-so, my members come in. Mm. So uh, nobody was coming in. Mm. So he's wondering, why are you members not coming in? <laughs> you know, so one of my friends mm. noticed his friend is in trouble. Mm. So he called so that the phone doesn't go live anymore. Yeah. And told him, uh, sir, it doesn't go like that. Mm. You know, so he schooled him <laughs> uh, how it goes. Yeah. Now he has thousands of followers. Wow. And wow. now he's able to minister online. Mm. Mm. That's the shift and the change. So mm. we have to come into that marriage. Mm. And I'm sure since 2020, I think uh, Christian faith and the gospel mm. has really uh, come up so much in the media mm. to God be the glory. That's cool. So as we celebrate three years as a, as a elevated TV, we are glad that mm. we've you know, just in a couple of months, mm. scratch the service, but scratched it well, that we already have certain dimensions of impact. Mm. And I'm sure our viewers 
if they begin to give us you know uh feedback mm -hmm. through the numbers on the screen oh seven one nine double six double six double five send us on youtube right now uh mm -hmm. to this uh, show on um apostolic clinic mm -hmm. or on facebook they, they'll tell us that lva tv has impacted them. yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, so we are glad. We are glad that we stepped mm. into it. Yes, I told people on Sunday on another show. Mm. God had spoken to me in 2008 mm. that a day is coming we're going to have TV station mm. and radio. It yeah. took 11 years wow. for that dream to come and to the pass. Days, yeah. And the days, yeah. And, and let me just speak to the to the to the viewers because sometimes I've I've worked in mainstream media. Yeah, yeah. And there are a few things that I know. Mm. The biggest financiers of media is betting company and alcohol. Yeah, God have mercy. The reason why, when you look at any media that is secular in nature, uh, they are top advertisements. And them that bring, the, the, the others that follow are possibly the telecommunication, mm. and then the government comes. Mm. But when we look at uh, some of the alcoholic companies, they pay millions. We are talking about 20 million per month just to place an advert of something that is going to destroy a generation. And that is why these people have the muscles because I was going through the statistics of um, East African breweries and I discovered uh, that their, their profits are in the tunes of 100 billion. You know, those are the profits that these guys are making uh, because that is looking at East Africa and they say 70% of their market is in Kenya. So they have what we call the capital muscles to pull any advertisement, pull any event, and do anything. Of course, looking at this is not something that is helping the community and helping the society. When you look at betting company, uh, ma 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 majority of the betting companies get more from the people than even it gives through what we call, you know, the winner, um, uh, uh, the winner and also what they call the charity. Mm. It's like I get a thousand from you and return two hundred. Yeah. That's exactly we are making billionaires out of these enterprises. And so looking at that, we begin to look at it because the question has been, why is it that many Christian stations are not competing to the levels of the secular stations? And that answers it. And that answers it because the financiers mm -hmm. and the major people who finance, because right now many media houses are on their knees because uh you know the terrain is shifting mm. and the people are now getting into the online space people are now using the the bloggers mm. and the online space to do their advertisement and they feel like these are a little bit cheaper and personally i feel that you'll be so surprised apostle that some of the leading actors in kenya majority have their background in church Oh, and because yes. there is no platform mm -hmm. for them to act, mm -hmm. the, the available platforms are now the secular movies. I've been in the movie industry, and I will meet people, the directors, the producers, and they will tell you, praise the Lord. Mm. There was one leading series, and that lady was a praise and worship leader in Kayole. Wow. So that tells you the church is so loaded. Mm. Some of the best musicians, some of the best band members are in church. Today we have uh, something sponsored by one of the soft drinks and they call it the Cox Studio. Majority of the people playing the instruments, majority of them learned from church. And so I believe there must be an intention because we have the skills, we have the expertise. You will be so surprised how many news anchors, mm. you know, even just mentioning someone like Wahiga Maura, mm. who is in BBC right now, mm. who is born again, and a person who fears the Lord, you talk of the Mark Masai, is, um, you know, Dennis Okari. These are people who are born again and they carry the spirit of God. Mm. But when you look at the enterprise, it's a little bit expensive. Mm. And I believe for us to step in as a nation and be able to interject and what we call in the market is disrupt. 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 Mm. I think the believers must come and ask themselves, is there a station in this land that can educate them, empower them, and above all, even shape conversation and shape the destinies of their children. That's where Elevate TV comes and in. And that's where Elevate TV comes in. One mother sent us a feedback and said, when the music on Elevate TV is playing, the baby can't cry. 
Mm. But when they dissolve, the baby is crying throughout. So they have to put a TV on. Yes. And the baby feels calm because of the spirit of God. And right now, and, and right now I know there is a project. Maybe just to bring the layout. You yeah. know, it's, it's very key. You know, someone is watching. Right now we're in 12 counties. <laughs> uh, someone is watching. What they don't know is that it takes almost a million to be live on air every month. Oh, it's, very, ex it's very expensive. And that, that's on the list. Yeah. Because we're looking at the people who are doing the editing. We're looking. Right now there are two young people. But I mean around three young people behind the cameras. There is the producer. There are people here with the lights. Me and Apostol, we are not on salary. We need to be on salary. I'm, I'm telling you, we, 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 we are. Uh, yeah. spending and being spent yes 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 i told my wife i'm going to work so you can imagine and i told my <laughs> baby i'm going to work and i believe um if the body of christ came together because we've seen this happen in the west we've heard of daystar tv yeah, yeah. we've heard of tbn mm -hmm. where they have modern uh modern equipment mm -hmm. and they are um, doing media with the disciplines of media mm. it was amazing uh to see people like uh people like akin and Diema. You know, these are minds in the kingdom, people that have, have, have managed secular stations and brought them to very high level operation. Elevate TV is forever grateful mm. for our production, the first production manager, yes. Anthony Diema. Yes. What a man, what a man. And, and, and he said some very serious disciplines, Absolutely. systems, and, standards. and simplicity. Yes. And maybe what people don't know is that Elevate is in the process of... Uh, making some new studios? Actually, uh, first T, we are building new studios and uh, it's expensive. Yes. We need uh, new cameras. It's yeah. expensive. Mm. Uh, we want to, because of the revival, you can see the mass meetings that have begun to show up. You are part of the major partners of the, of the, of the Rema Feast. Yes. And yes. I saw you are listed among the five um, Christian media stations. Absolutely. And I remember when they called, they said Elevate was the first station we considered. Absolutely. Amen. Elevate TV was in the Rema Fest. Yeah. And we also were there uh, with the uh, Rodney Howard Brown. Yes. We were there with the Heaven's Fire, with mm. the Apostle Subi. Mm. When C.D. Jacobs came here, yeah. we interviewed her and uh, Francina. And so we want to up our game yeah. and provide... Uh, equipment and transportation and outside broadcasting so that we get able to be in the front line of revival and so we've stepped up by faith and right now we are fundraising mm. and actually we are asking people that have been impacted by Elevate TV. What is the budget? Ah, my brother uh, do you want to say that right now? I, I okay. believe, so maybe we don't know who could be watching Apostle. Yeah. Uh, Someone might we, call and say, Apostle, don't make that announcement again. <laughs> we need five million in the next three weeks. Okay, five million. Yeah. So we are looking, we are in 12 counties. Yeah, and uh, the other day we, we got into a challenge because yeah. we've been running from Isiolo down to Kajiado. Yeah. And the technology and the service provider, we had a challenge. And so in the last few weeks we've been off in Meru and Nyeri, but we were told maybe today we'll be back in Nyeri. Mm. In the next couple of days, uh, we change the provider so that we can give a better signal. Because one of the things Elevate TV has done mm. is to ensure we are giving quality. Because c Christian TV stations must, must so Apostle, really have signal. Apostle, what I'm hearing is possibly part of the assignment in the fourth year is to go national. Absolutely. We are looking for, for to go national. We want to go into Rift Valley, into Western Kenya, all the way from Abuya Kisumu. We want to mm. go down to Mombasa. We want to go everywhere that we can be able to throw our signal yes. nationally. Nationally. And it takes a lot of money. Yes. And staff. Mm. And there's something else we want to do. We want this to become a house of good news. So we also want to go into good news. Okay. And be able to provide news. Mm. Not so and so stamped so and so. Mm. And so and so was killed by so and so. No. Mm. Mm. But we want to share the good things happening in our nation. Mm. And so that's an area we're looking forward into wow. as we help propagate the gospel. Mm. And actually, our main focus is advancing kingdom lifestyle. Mm. And that means for the kingdom message and the kingdom of God to uh, show up everywhere, mm. we have to use strategies like use an educational angle, a governance angle through the seven mountains. Yeah. You know, 
a business angle mm. and economics and so forth. And you can see mm. our shows, particularly the Morning Digest. Mm. On Mondays, we deal with business and economics. Tuesday, on leadership. Wednesday, on women and, I mean, no, youth mm. and the children. Uh, Thursday, focusing on women. Friday, church affairs, yeah. you know. Mm. And, uh, of course, in the evenings, we have programs for various groups within the body of Christ. Mm. So that we ensure we have a holistic message. Yeah. So that any parent mm. can actually leave, listen parents, you mm. can leave Elevate TV live in the morning when you go to work mm. if your children are uh, in the house. And you come back in the evening if the TV has been on the whole day. Mm. And you can be sure your child mm. was not falsely indoctrinated. Your child was entertained, ministered to, enjoyed the spirit of God, the anointing. This mm. is the kind of TV mm. that people are enjoying right now. And not just the child, even the house. You Absolutely. enter and form the house, it's under a new <laughs> atmosphere, Absolutely. a new environment. Yeah. And so opposed to because of time, uh, you know, maybe, how can people partner? Yeah, so what we have because, done... Uh, this is one for the body of Christ. Yeah. The, the kind of, uh, maybe we can even, I, I can say this live on TV. Yeah. If not 100%, mm. ma majority of the hosts are working on pro bono. Because Absolutely. they believe in the vision Excellent. and they know if we don't make media work in our day, yeah. we might look back and regret because there was no alternative sound. That's the strategy we used. I asked people within our church and the networks, yes. uh, can you use your skill mm -hmm. to advance kingdom lifestyle? Yes. And that's what they are doing. Yes. So we are not paying them. Yes. We wish we could yes. and we want to. Yes. Glory to God. We mm. want to. Mm. So we have set up, they can see on the screen, we have our Elevate TV team number, 5329905. That's a number right now. In fact, before we go, we're going to ask you to give, mm. if you can be able to begin to give. And if you want to give large amount of money that cannot fit through the MPESA system, mm. you send us an inbox or send us a text through the number zero. Uh, 719-666-555 and we also have for Zero those who are 719-666-555 and it's there on the TV screen okay, okay. and we also have another number for those who are outside the country who can use WAVE okay. it's a WAVE app okay. uh, so the, with the Kenyan code 254 you know plus 254 mm. then it is 706 mm -hmm. then 6554 and it's there also on the screen. Okay. If you take a mm. few seconds and keep looking, mm. you'll see the numbers and together with the wave. Mm. And also, uh, you can send money to the account. And I'm sure uh, you'll see those details on the screen. Mm -hmm. We are asking right now, mm. this week and next week, if you can partner with us, our viewers, and help us take Elevate TV to the next level. Mm -hmm. This is the first time, really, we, uh, we feel that we have an urgency mm. and we want to take Elevate TV to be a blessing in this nation. And, it, and it's very true, and maybe just to say, is that there is no media house that is not financed. Absolutely. Either by governments yeah. or by people who want to sell a certain agenda. Yeah. And we want to believe that the body of Christ must arise and begin to contribute to sounds and voices that are transformational mm -hmm. and also changing. Yeah. I've had many people complain and sharing these things on, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. You know, this cartoon, they now changed it. Mm -hmm. Where is the world going? Mm -hmm. But the question is, what is the church doing? Absolutely. Because uh, complaining is the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. But if we create an alternative, yeah. something that we can tell our children, this one is not good, but this is the best one. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are going to change the conversation. That's and so correct. today, our viewers, um, I believe five million, five million, my, I, I, five million is is money we can raise even in this service i believe it for the many people who are watching the 100 shilling the 500 mm -hmm. we need up-to-date cameras we mm -hmm. need to make sure that we bring you uh you know clear images we need equipment we need what we call an ob van mm -hmm. so that we are able to move from one town to another and mm -hmm. go live in different locations and as you're talking can happen yes, as you're yes. talking ruth has sent uh, already some money wow and uh, jeru has sent some money Constantine has sent some money, mm. and so we are glad wow. that you guys have already begun to send in, you know, uh, sowing yes. and sending some money. Wow, that's Let's true. do it together mm. in Jesus' mighty name. That's very true. And you see, Apostle, the other thing I've discovered, um, there are, and we are not here to bash any television, yeah, no, no, no. but there are many other televisions, and when you look at possibly what is being sold, is something totally different. Yeah. And, and I believe it's time for Kenyans to arise and begin to support genuine. 
Absolutely. Yeah, someone said wa Kenya wana pesa lakini ni kama lazima wadanganye. We will not lie to you. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't yeah. take advantage yeah. of anybody yeah. and uh, we don't uh, go ahead and promise you yes. heaven and give you hell. Yes. We just want to be open. Mm. We are just in you know concerned and passionate about pure gospel, pure doctrine. The truth. Right, the truth. We are elevating the truth. Yes, yes. And uh, that's what we are doing. And those who have tasted LV yes. TV can tell you can tell that you. they have enjoyed every moment. Yeah, we don't want to tell them imagine tunakunywa ni Israel. Uh -huh. And so ya Jordan and nini kwanza kuna bomiwa kule na tunaomba mwambie tu kwamba kuwe na amani. Yes, so I believe our viewers I believe it's time for us to support that which is genuine. Yeah. It takes money to be on air. I said or oh, just per month you just need a million. A million to be live on air and i tell you the truth salvations healings many things are happening that money can never buy and now we must take this thing to the next level and the next level means investment as you're talking right now there is a studio under construction a lot of strategy a lot of consultation so that we make sure that number one we are also catching up with the moving trends i shared and i said some of the biggest financiers of what we call the secular stations majority of them are the betting companies and the alcohol companies we don't bet here we don't promote alcohol we promote jesus and so it takes now people to come and be a support to what is exactly happening elevate at three I know we began from somewhere, the studios were not as beautiful as they are, but we cannot remain in the former glory. Mm -hmm. Something must change. By next year, you need to look at the TV and say, I'm happy they are moving to another level. More programs, movies that are locally acted, more, more dynamics, but all these translates into a very serious budget. And maybe we can say, maybe you are there, uh, you are running a company, uh, you're, you're there, uh, you're, you're running an enterprise, you are involved in a marketing department. Also, you can give us business yeah, and in, help terms, us. in terms of advertisement. This is part of you helping us indirectly. Some of you are serious marketers, some of you are very influential, and some of you are even owners of companies. It's your business. You can just come and say, you know what, I want to be a part of this Christian television, but above all, I also want my, my, my company to be advertised there. And one of the things I know, the rates are very affordable. Yeah, and actually, we have also given an opportunity for those who may want to come for uh, a dinner that we have established or organized on 17th of October, which is next Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, 6 in the evening at the Sarova uh, Stanley here in the CBD. You know, a card just 5,000 for dinner, and then we're going to give opportunity for people to give. And even after we're done with the show, you'll see the advert yes. uh, on TV. Please, mm -hmm. uh, you can text us and say you want to come to the dinner, and you can get a card and be able to pay through that same uh, till number 5329905 and book your uh, table uh, on that night and we can have fellowship. Yeah. We'll be glad to meet you. And uh, Pastor T, as we are talking, yes. uh, we have a couple of people that are actually sending in uh, their donations right away. I will just mention a few. Michael, God bless you um, for sending in a donation. And uh, Jane, thank you so much. And Samuel, God bless you very much. Uh, uh, Godfrey, uh, thank you very much. And Peter, what a joy that you guys are making a, uh, you know, a contribution right away. Abby, this is good. And Stephen, thank you so very much uh, for what you are sending. And we want to encourage more people, even when we are done with this show, because the numbers remain circulating. Consider this week. Pray, make a prayer, and I'll pray with you. Say, God, give me some money. I want to sow to this television. Mm. I mean, Elevate Television. Amen. It'll be a great blessing. And I believe soon we'll be launching what we call the Partners of Elevate. Yes, and we'll be launching the Partners of Elevate uh, on the 17th during yeah. the dinner. Mm. And uh, it's a way we can stand together. I like what you said, being intentional. Yeah. Oh, yes, to support our own Christian television. Mm. And this will be a blessing. Amen. And people are watching from different parts of the world. Yes. Uh, you know, we have Elevate TV up. Yes. And many people from different countries mm. are already watching. The other day, uh, my wife and I went to preach in Qatar. And we were amazed. Just a one-day meeting, preaching the gospel. And many amazing Kenyans came into the meeting saying, hey, we are followers of Elevate TV. Wow, wow. And, and it's we also on YouTube. Encouraged. It's also on YouTube. Also on Facebook. And Facebook. So, and so globally, it's not just... I don't know 
Is your loan Aishik on Facebook? Uh, the, other day, the other day I was in Dallas in a private uh, dinner for somebody who invited me to share. And then some, a stranger comes and greets me and says, Oh, you are LV TV and I watch all the way from America and you guys are doing a good job. Your voice is vibrating in the diaspora. I said, Wow. wow. Mm. I was amazed. And you know, a certain television station in Canada uh, actually liked what we are doing on LV TV and they picked four of our shows. This one, mm. Postal Clinic, yeah. and Encourage a Past and others. And that's why on the screen you usually see uh, a flag of Canada mm. and the US. Mm. It's not. Uh, what I would call in, in Chinese, magemio. Yes. It is actually real. Mm. Those numbers you can text, and there's you know, people in those nations mm. that are watching part of Canada and part of America. Wow. And it's a blessing. Amen, amen. Yeah. So, Apostle, I think our time is up. Yep. I want to say thank you to everybody that has tuned in today. Thank you for everyone that has made a commitment even to give today. And I know that you'll continue giving $5 million is not a lot of money if we join our forces together and remember you can also buy that plate of dinner uh wherever you are and just be a support to elevate tv new things are coming better things are coming and i can tell you your tv life is about to change permanently may god bless you see you next monday and have a blessed night